In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use subplot to plot multiple data sets in the same figure window, but this time in different plotting spaces. So we mentioned that if we run this, which is the code we put together when we were modifying things, I have three different data sets all plotted in the same figure. This is figure one, this box, also in the same plotting space in figure one. But this time I want to put them in different plotting spaces all in the same figure. So for that, we're going to create an array of plots. Now, to do this, we're going to use the subplot command. And if I issue subplot or I write out subplot, it tells me M, N, P. M is the number of rows, N is the number of columns, and P is the position. Now, that'll be more clear in a minute when we start playing with this, but I'm going to start with 3, 3, 1. This time, I want different plots. So we're going to say subplot 3, 1, 2, and then plot. Get rid of that. Um, excuse me. Uh, comma, and then I want subplot, and then 313, plot, open parentheses, close parentheses. So now I have subplot, plot, subplot, plot, subplot, plot. Now let me run this, and then we'll, we'll have to fix one more thing, and then we can have a conversation about it. So if I run this, here's what I have. Okay. Now, I said that we were going to create an array of plots. This array is three rows, one, two, three, and one column, just one single column. In the first position, we have data set one. Remember, O's, uh, dotted line, blue. Here's data set one. Here we have data set two, X's, dash, dot, and red. And here's data set three, squares, dash, dash, and green. So, dash line, green with squares. However, all of our formatting only exists for the last plot. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete my legend. Because we only need a legend if we have more than one data set plotted in the same plotting space. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of my formatting. And I'm going to paste it below each plot. Because, there we go. I need all of that formatting, X labels, Y labels, titles. Because this would be chemistry lab one data. Um, or we would say, how about sample set one data? Sample set one data. And we'll say sample set uh, two data. And sample set three data. Okay. Now when I run this, now I have titles, X labels, and Y labels. We'll make this a little bigger so we can see it. Um, so here's my sample set one, here's my sample set two, here's my sample set three. And I said C sample set, so let's just go ahead and rerun that. Change it, and here we go. All right, sample set one, sample set two, sample set three. Now, our formatting is the same for everything. Now we have X labels, Y labels, we have a grid, we have a title for each one, so we're set there. Now it's important to understand, what does subplot do? Okay, so subplot creates an array of figures. And there really is no better way to show you this than to just go through a sequence of examples where we change all of these things. So I'm actually going to say we started with three rows, one column. So now let's just go to one row, three columns. Now we have to make that change for all of our subplot commands. So instead of three comma one, we're going to say one comma three. And instead of three comma one, we're going to say one comma three. Now when I run this again, this is what I have. Instead of three rows, one column, I have one row three columns. And if I take a look at my figure, I have one row. This is my row. Three columns. Column one, column two, column three. The positions start at the top left. Position one. And then we work our way across the row. One, two, three. And that uh, continues down any row that we have. So to show you that, let's go ahead and do this. Now let's make it two rows, three columns. Two rows, three columns. Two rows, three columns. We have six different spaces. So we'll start in space one. And then the first row will have one, two, and three. So then we'll come to space four and we'll come to space six. And when I plot this, now I have an array of plots, two rows by three columns. Here's row one, here's row two. Here's column one, column two, column three. As a matter of fact, let's change this to position two because now we'll have an element in any row or both rows and an element in all three columns. And by element, I mean plot. Here's row one, here's row two. This is column one, column two, column three. Now, this array works in the following way. Position one, nothing. Position two, well, I told it to plot this information in position two. 
Position three, didn't give it any information. Position four, I told it to plot all of this information in position four. Position five and position six, I told it to plot all of this in position six right here. So this is how we create an array of plots. And we can make this as big as we want. It could be 20 by 20. And let's just go ahead and copy that because here we go. And here we go. Now we have 400 positions, so let's just go ahead and pick some stuff at random. Let's say, um, I don't know, 55, and we'll say uh, 215, and we'll say, I guess, 375. We'll run this, and this is the array of plots that we have. Now, it's kind of hard to see where any of this is. These are the same, or this, these are the sizes of our plots, um, but you know, there are 400 positions here. Uh, I'm going to do one more example, but this was sort of an introduction to subplot. I'm going to show how MATLAB enumerates the subplot positions in another example that's going to directly follow this in a playlist. So if you'd like to see more of that, go ahead and play the next video. Till next time.